It's time for Girls in Golf Podcast with your favorite hosts, Lex and Sarah. Ladies, when you're ready. Welcome to Girls in Golf. I'm Lex. Sarah can join us today, but I'm really excited to be joined by the LPGA's latest winner, Georgia Hall. Congratulations and thank you for joining me. Thank you. No, pleasure to be to see you. And um, yeah, it's all kind of a whirlwind, but I'm extremely happy. <laughs> Yeah, well, the last time I talked to you, um, it was really early in quarantine. We had Carlotta Siganda on, of course, your Solheim Cup teammate. And um, now you are a first time winner in America, second time, second win on the LPGA. What was key to your victory this week? Yeah, I think that I, you know, I stayed very calm and patient. Um, I really love the golf course in Portland. Columbia Edgewater is fantastic course in great condition um and yeah I just played really good golf last week yeah you certainly did and I know you shot six under on your second round which was really notable considering you only had three rounds to play right when did you find out you know that it was going to be a shortened round and what did you do on Thursday yeah um well, because the, the air quality was, was really bad, um, it got cut down to three days and uh, we couldn't practice that much. So I just tried to make the most of my preparation and um, hit hit balls when I could for the two or three hours a day and just tr- kind of prepare as much as I could for Friday. Um, I played here last year and the year before that, so I kind of knew the course. Um, I was just really excited to get going. Yeah, well, it's your third year on tour, correct? Yes. Yeah. Third year on tour. So, you know, third time seeing this in tournament condition. And like you said, you really like the course and you have some course knowledge. You made some good ups, up and downs with your jaws wedges. Tell me a little bit about how important it is to have confidence in your wedges, whether it's from the bunker or the rough to set yourself up for a good par save. Yeah, I think, you know, good chips can be crucial, especially um towards the end of the round and um, I definitely did have some hard shots but um yeah I love my wedges and I feel very confident with them so um yeah I'm glad they kind of they came in very handy at the end you hit 83 percent of the fairways over the three rounds how does your driver feel right now and where's your swing at with that because a lot of people when they feel confident in their driver swing it's like everything is clicking right yeah exactly and Hitting fairways is always key. It gives you a much easier shot into the hole. And um, yeah, I drove the ball very well last week and very long as well. And um, I really do love my driver. It's one of my uh, best clubs in the whole bag. So I feel very confident using that. How does it feel and what does it mean to you to have your first win in America? I know you, you've talked about it a little bit. You know, you got your first win, which was a major, which is amazing to check off of your belt. But now having this first win in America, which is where a lot of um, events are, now you can keep going in your career, right? Yeah, uh, it's definitely a goal of mine this year to win in the U.S. Um, obviously, I won in England uh, when I won the major, but yeah, it does mean a lot to me. Um, I play, you know, mostly in America. So to win on US soil was very important. And I'm very glad that I've done that now. And I can bring that confidence on to the next event. For you, you know, this this event did come with no fans. Obviously, we we're still in COVID times. But you had your friends there to shower you in champagne. Does, was that special? Yeah, definitely. Um when I won the major, um, I think a lot of my friends uh, were traveling to the next event, so they weren't there at the end. But um, to have some of my closest friends there cheering me on and, and hugging me at the end, it was just, it, I'm really grateful for them. And um, they definitely made the ending really, really nice. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm very lucky to have such such great friends. What what was it like, you know, when you bogeyed 18, found out you have to go to a playoff without sure, I'm sure it was kind of like a surprise to you, right? There's not a leaderboard for you to check. And I know you're not much of one to watch a leaderboard really intentionally. You didn't even know that you were um, up at the top. So how did you shift your mindset going into the playoff? Yeah, um, I, I really, I didn't know going down 18 and um, I didn't know whether I was third or winning by five shots. So when I'd done my scorecard, I found out that um, I was in a playoff. So I, I was a bit upset at first, knowing that I bogeyed the last. But I had like five minutes to like refigure myself to to, 
to try and win this playoff. And um, I managed to do that and just kind of settled my nerves. And yeah, it was, um, it, I was a bit nervous at the end, but I just kind of said, right, that's done now. Let's just try and focus on this playoff. Well, it certainly worked out for you. Um, what's next, you know, for your rest of the year? Yeah, I'm playing in um, nearly all of the events like I have done so far. I'm really grateful that we're even playing on the LPGA. Um, I know it's been a tough year for everyone because of COVID, but uh, I definitely re reevaluate my goals now and it'd be great to get another win um, for the end of the year, for sure. So how long are you going to be in the States then before you go home? Um, is it just through the US Open? So, um, yeah, I've been playing in every event since Scottish, so that's mm -hmm. quite a long time ago. And I'm going to go home after KPMG and then come back out for the US Open CME. So what's your, you know, your practice routine going to look like now? Now that you feel like your game is in a good spot, obviously you've won. Where do you go from here just to stay consistent through the rest of the season? I think a lot of it just um, mentally, I was just very confident last week and believed in my ability. So I'm just going to go with that same mindset. Um, I'm going to have two or three days off now just to kind of enjoy the win and relax and chill out a bit. Um, and then I'll kind of get back into it towards the end of the week for ShopRite. What do you like to do uh, to relax, especially when you're in Arizona, which is my home state? There's, you know, lots of sunshine and some pools to hang out at, hopefully that you can get into this time. Yeah, because of COVID, it's pretty hard to do anything. So um, obviously, number one priority is keeping safe and healthy. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, not too much. Um, I'm going to watch some movies. Um, obviously, I'll, I'll order food in or pick it up. Um, maybe go on some nice walks when it's not too hot. Uh, and then other than that, just practice. You know, okay, last, last thing I will say about COVID the, the bubble that the LPGA has, you know, created for you guys has been really successful. How does it make you feel knowing that, you know, you're safe? And why do you think it's important that they've they've done this for you? Oh, yeah. I mean, the LPGA have done a tremendous job. Um, all of us, I think, feel very safe and uh, we can't go to restaurants. And, um, you know, we we make sure that, you know, we don't go out anywhere that puts us at risk as well. And um, I think that's very important because there's players traveling all around the world um, to play in these events. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's extremely well organized and uh, I couldn't feel any safer playing on tour. Well, that's really good to hear because we want you to stay safe and stay in contention, hopefully, with your full Callaway bag. And if anybody listening would like to know what's in Georgia's bag, you can go to CallawayGolf.com. Um, Georgia, it's a pleasure to have you for these few minutes. And, you know, congratulations once again on winning the Cambia Portland Classic. Hopefully, we'll see you soon again to talk about another win, right? Yes, definitely. Sure. <laughs>